What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Duntown Show. This is episode two, and let's get right into it. Um, we're going to kick this episode off with a little bit of shop talk. Uh, go over to Outcast Services on YouTube, and you can check out our uh, blazer build that we're working on. Uh, we just released part five. Um, that's going to be released on our Outcast Services LLC uh, Instagram as well. So head over there, guys, and check that out. Um, and then we're going to have the Duntown Show uh, Instagram to follow up with the uh, podcast itself. We do have the YouTube for this now out. Obviously, that's how you're watching this because I don't have it out on any other platforms yet. So uh, thank you for following, subscribing, and listening in. But we will get uh, the Duntown Show uh, Instagram coming up here real soon. We're working on it. Um, I just want to have a little bit of content built up before we start the Instagram so that it's not, uh, I don't want to dry out just one or two episodes and just keep re, you know, blasting them. Uh, and we're going to move on from there, guys. So again, welcome in, um, Outcast Services on YouTube. Uh, we sold a project boat this week um, in the shop. It was pretty cool. It was a boat that my father and I had bought. Um, a nice aluminum boat. We had plans of, uh, you know, kind of getting it running and getting it out on the ocean. Um, about an 18 footer. It's got a 250 Merc cruiser in it. And, uh, you know, we have a bigger boat. Uh, we actually have an Outcast Ocean Division on Instagram as well. A lot of Outcast action, guys. So you can head over there and check that out. Um, and you'll see our Sea Ray boat that we have. And we go out to like Catalina and stuff like that in the ocean. It's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We didn't get to get out much last summer. So I'm hoping that this summer it'll be a, a little bit better year for us. We can get out there. Um, but yeah, we sold it. Uh, dad and son project. And the dad and his uh, partner are going in on it. And the partner happens to be like a mechanic. He does like uh, Volkswagen bus conversions. So that's pretty cool. He's like down in the City of Commerce, uh, Torrance, down in that area, I believe. And uh, so apparently he's familiar with the fishing down in that area, and they're just excited to get the boat on the water. Um, we also sold him an additional Merc Cruiser 250 from that same era that we had pulled out of another boat. Uh, they bought that as well. So they ended up getting the original boat with the motor and out drive, two additional out drives that we had for parts and then a complete engine and out drive all for like a really, really good price guys. Um, it was a Starcraft boat. I believe I, I can't believe the build on that thing. The aluminum hull was flawless and it was like a 1985, I believe. Um, and yeah, it was really nice. So I'm excited. You could tell the guy who bought it was pumped about it. You know, you could tell he was ready to get into another boat project. I guess they had had one and, um, you know, it had some problems or whatever. And then they had to sell it. So now they're excited to get into this boat and uh, get it out onto the ocean. In fact, we talked to the one guy that's a mechanic um, because they're supposed to be coming to pick up the engine tomorrow at the shop. Um, at actually at my dad's place. And... Uh, We'll load them up there and they'll take it down to where the mechanic has his shop. And they've already got the other engine pulled out. So they're on it. You know, they're on it. So uh, picking up the pace here a little bit, guys. Um, uh, the Blazer update. Um, if you haven't heard about it, go back to uh, episode one. We talk a little bit about myself and the intro to this whole uh, ordeal and how I got started, but we got the blazer going. Uh, like I said, we just released part five on that. Um, so go check it out. And we just finished painting up all the brake booster and we detailed all the engine and kind of got everything covered up because we're expecting some rain to come in this weekend. So that's a cool deal. Um, upcoming projects for us are gonna be the CNC. We touched on it a little bit in the last video, but we're actually gonna continue touching on that. Um, over the next couple weeks, we have a few uh, designs ready to go and we're going to be doing like what I like to call the meat hook project and it's just basically going to be a CNC cutout design of a meat hook. So those of you that like to barbecue, you know, it's basically a handle with a spike at the end and it has a little bent hook. So you just hook it in your tri-tip or whatever you're cooking and be able to flip it. So we're coming out with our own design for that. I think that'll be pretty unique. 
Um, and then we're going to go out <clears throat> and hopefully install some uh, custom signage and, and gate work um, this summer, like I talked about in Bullhead City, maybe do a little bit of uh, mobile repair work this summer if I can figure out you know, a cool location out there where I can store my tools and stuff so I can just go out there on the busy weekend and just do like trailer repair, lighting repair, you know, stuff where people beat their stuff up all weekend and then they have to get it fixed so they can tow it back home. And uh, it's a possibility to, <clears throat> excuse me, to make a lot of money. Um, so that's going to be a big, big segment on our YouTube channel that's coming up and, and also we'll incorporate it into this uh, show a little bit and just talk about some cool stuff we have coming up. Um, and then we're on the board here with you guys on YouTube. We got our first episode out earlier this week. Um, it seems to be doing pretty well. We just got it out. So we're excited to already be recording episode number two. And uh, that's going to pretty much wrap up the shop talk for this week. I don't want to drag it out because we talked a lot about it last week. Um, but I do want to introduce <clears throat> the keep or sweep segment. And what are we keeping or what are we sweeping, guys? So every week or every episode, occasionally we'll throw this in there. And just, you know, it's something that you think is cool you want to keep or something that you're tired of and you're ready to to sweep it uh this week i'll be honest with you um <clears throat> it's gonna be super bowl related and i know it's probably on like everybody's sell list and everybody's get rid of it um i'm not selling taylor swift herself but i am going to sell the fucking taylor swift prop bets okay i don't know if it's a real deal or not but i've seen a thing come across today and you can actually bet on Super Bowl MVP to mention Taylor Swift. If you think it's yes, that's plus 230. A Kelsey proposal at the Super Bowl. If you think that's a yes, that's plus 920. And will Kelsey get more catches than Taylor Swift has platinum albums, which is 10. And the over is plus 450. I mean... I have no problem with what's going on with all this. If anything, it just adds that type of, you know, hype or drama that it's easy for us to just play, oh, fuck it, we hate it. Taylor Swift, what are we doing? This ain't NFL, this and that, which I totally understand. I get it. It gets a little ridiculous. You know, some of the announcers won't even acknowledge it. And then other ones, they love it. They can't say it enough. And the constant going to her and showing. And I, I get it, man. And the fact that they're going to be in the Super Bowl, it's pretty bizarre the way that whole storyline played out. Um, but, yeah, we're sweeping the prop bets for Taylor Swift. Okay? We got other uh, bets and stuff to get into that we want to talk about that are way more entertaining and way more uh, interesting than what Taylor Swift thinks about the Super Bowl. Um, so moving on from there guys, uh, we're going to do the sports tip off here. I want to get right into it. Uh, tip off segment. Now the NBA is where we're going to start because we went on a rant the other day about the Lakers and who's going to step up. Is anybody going to step up for the Lakers against, uh, Boston? And I tell you what, they absolutely did. And they stepped up in a really big way. 114 to 105 was the total, and the Lakers won, and quite frankly, they dominated from the very beginning of the game. You know, um, Boston, uh, Jason Tatum had 23 points, Porzingis had 17, Sam Hauser had 17 points, and the rest were scored by a bunch of the other guys um, on Boston. Um, Austin Reeves had uh, seven three-pointers and 32 points for 35 minutes. He pushed the ball good. He had really good shooting. Um, D'Lo, 14 assists, four three-pointers, 16 points in 39 minutes. So he played uh, the whole damn game. Um, Jackson Hayes, center, stepped up 34 minutes, 16 points, played pretty well. Uh, Torian Prince, 38 minutes, 11 points. And then Jared Vanderbilt, who got injured, you know. We'll talk a little bit more about that. He only played for 16 minutes and already had two threes and 10 points. So he was off to a pretty good start. But 
we talked about guys stepping up and kind of taking the lead a little bit when LeBron and AD aren't playing. And you got to give a little shout out to Rui Hachimura. He ended up stepping in for Vanderbilt, playing 33 minutes. He had three three-pointers, 15 points, you know. But you step up off the bench and you get a shot. And uh, we'll get into uh, Vanderbilt's injury a little more, which will tell us how much uh, Hachimura is going to be playing this month. But really good win for them over Boston. Um, I thought it was a, one of the best games we've watched. It was one of Austin Reeves' best games as a Laker. Um, a lot of talk about that he might be overrated. I, I don't know if I believe that he's overrated. I think the problem is if you play for the Lakers and you do pretty well, you can get hyped up really quick. And that can be a lot to deal with, I think. You know, when he was not really in the spotlight and just starting out but would come out and play hard and, and score some good points everybody you know it really started to build a little bit of a fan base but then you know you have these professionals that are retired and they know basketball and they'll look and they'll say well you know what just give him time to develop he'll be a, a really good player to a possibly a great player but to just start calling him great right out of the gate i don't think that's the uh route to go with but, I mean, he continues to put up games like he did uh, against Boston, and that'll all soon fade away, and he'll, he will be really good. I hope we don't lose him. I really hope we don't lose him at the trade. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about picking up a, a defender. Uh, we'll see how that goes. You know, I mean, it, it's business at the end of the day. Um, coming up, guys, Lakers at the Knicks Saturday at 5.30. Um, the matchup predictions to win. Um, it looks like uh, the New York Knicks are favored 65.7% uh, to the Lakers 34% to win. Um, I mean, I get it. Uh, but if the guys step up like they did against Boston, we have a real good chance of winning this game. So I'm excited about that. Um, besides that, you're going to see LeBron James. I just heard he was going to be a game time decision, but I did hear that he is going to play. Um, he loves to play Madison Square Gardens. We know that he's put up some really good points in Madison Square Garden. Um, you know, New York is favored, but they don't have Randall. He is on the, uh, no uh, playlist, obviously, because he's got a bad shoulder and he's going to be two to three weeks before he gets reevaluated. Um, so for the Knicks, it's pretty much going to be the Jalen Brunson show. You know, he's averaging 27 points this year. Um, he averages uh, 29 points against L.A. And he's been averaging 32.6 points over the last 10 games. So he's been balling. And uh, you know he's going to put on a show Saturday night in New York with L.A. coming in. Uh, we saw some of those LeBron James tweets. You know, the hourglass. Not sure what it meant. And then uh, he didn't play. The Lakers stepped up. He was supposed to be a game time decision. But from what I'm hearing, he is going to play. Um, I don't think Anthony Davis is going to play, to be honest. But he's listed as game time decision currently. Um... So one or more, uh, one or both will play 24.9 points average. We could use that from at least one of them. Um, and then the Jared Vanderbilt, uh, he or uh, Vanderbilt, he is out till February 22nd. So that means Rui Hachimura will fill in. Um, and he had a great game. I mean, again, off the bench for 15 points. I, I liked that. He seemed to bring a little bit of energy. I think he was feeding off of the whole energy of the rest of the squad, especially with the two superstars sitting out, you know, it, it's pretty good. Um, the over under for this game is 227 and a half points. So that's uh, still predicted to be a pretty high scoring uh, basketball game for the crew. Um, let's see if they uh, can step it up in New York like they did the other night, guys, because I tell you, they really played good and it was an exciting game to watch. Um, I think in the last podcast, we really talked about that. It, we were like stressing, okay, who's going to step up? Is anyone going to step up? You know, what's it going to take? Um, and it was crazy because the pregame predictions and the money lines and all that stuff were so heavy on Boston. And they had they had everybody playing. 
you know, and they just didn't have an answer. So that was really exciting. Really good win in the garden over there. Um, so we'll see. I know I just went back to the Boston game because, man, I was excited about that, dude. I hope that energy shows up in New York. I really do. That'd be sick. The Lakers fans need it. And we talked about the next 10 games maybe winning six. So from that prediction, we've already won one. So maybe we can go on a little bit of a run here. Um, so that'll cover some of the injuries and stuff that's going on on both teams. So it's going to be a good matchup. No AD, no Randall. You know, hey, it is what it is, guys. Guys get hurt. These guys play hard. And uh, I also heard the Clippers won tonight again. Moving on, we're going to go into the NFL a little bit. Pro Bowl is Sunday on ABC, uh, ESPN, and ESPN+. Plus. Okay, the broadcast is kicking off around 12 p.m. if you want to check it out. And then I think round three, the actual flag football or whatever their main event is, is going to be on at that point. So there is no football this weekend. It's something to watch. You know, you could check it out if you ain't doing nothing. Uh, Super Bowl predictor for ESPN.com right now, 49ers 59.4 and Kansas City 40.6. Okay, the 49ers are favored by a little bit and they have zero injuries to report. Where obviously Kansas City Sky Moore is on injured reserve, we know that. Um, their guard Joe Thune, he's questionable. And then what's really sad is uh, Charles... Omen Hugh, Omen Hugh, he's out, torn ACL uh, in the championship game, which sucks, you win all season or whatever, you know, you make it all the way to that point and then you have a season ending injury right before you go to the Super Bowl. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, so that sucks. Uh, moving on from that sad story. Uh, we got the 49ers opened up at minus two and a half points, and now they're minus two. Uh, so are the Kansas City Chiefs really the underdog here? Is it, or is this just like a storyline? I don't know. Um, I guess I understand why they might be. Just maybe because of the injuries. They're, are they comparing it? You know, I'm not sure. But it's very, very close. Um, the total game points for this uh, Super Bowl this year is going to be over under 47 and a half right now as it sits. Um, so that's not too outrageous. So again, I think it's going to be a good defensive game. Um, both teams are stacked with some really good players. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes. The Kansas City money line right now, if you want to just take Kansas City outright, is plus 107. $100 wins you 107 bucks. San Francisco money line, you got to bet $127 to win 100. Um, but it's all hypothetical money, right? It's all hypothetical. Um, we want Frisco to win. We want the Kansas City money line because it's a win win for us. Um, that's, that's what I'm sticking to. I've heard that same thing. I'm not the only one thinking that. We want San Francisco to win, but we'll put a little money or whatever towards Kansas City. So if the Niners do happen to lose, maybe you win a little money. If the Niners win, you lost a little money. But the fucking Niners won, and Kansas City finally gets beat. And that'll help, uh, help the uh, Brock Purdy case, too, for the ones out there that are about Brock Purdy. We'll see. Maybe that'll shut some of us right up. Um, coaching news, guys. Okay. Not a whole lot going on. Bilicek, again, only interviewed with the Falcons. No hire. Um, he's not going to get hired this round unless something happens, obviously, during the off season, And uh, it'll be announced immediately because, you know, it's just going to be Bilicek till he has a new home. That's just the way it goes. Another uh, guy that some people say he was only good because of Brady. Other people put him right at the top of their list of the best coach to ever do it. Um, which leads me to 
the confidence in the new leader down there in LA at the Chargers, Jim Harbaugh. It's the Harbaugh show in LA, dude. Okay, he came out with the quote, it needs to be multiple championships. And he's referring to getting respect in the LA area, in SoCal, you know, the big powerhouse that we are. If you even want to make a mark, you got a long way to go. You had the Raiders, you got the Dodgers, you know, what about them Lakers? Yeah, you got all that going on. But if there's a guy that can do it, it's going to be Jim Harbaugh. I like his energy. I like the, his class about it. I like his confidence. I like the way that nobody's really questioning what he said, where if other coaches would have said that, they'd have been like, who is this guy? Is he nuts? You know? And, you know, he's running uh, high off of the uh, national championship, as he should be. So he's wanting to take that same momentum and drive it right into the NFL. You know, he feels he has something to prove. I, I think it's great. I really, really can't wait for uh, that whole performance to take place. And then uh, one last little thing here, a little Saints news. We get a new offensive coordinator, and it's Clint Kubiak from the 49ers. It was their passing game specialist. So we'll see if that can maybe help cure some of the ailments that we've had down there in New Orleans with our quarterback issues. The MGA Golf Association, which we are a part of here, a Mediocre Golf Association, um, I should say, is next event is the Bumwine Tour. It's Saturday, February 10th at 9 a.m. at the Hartwell Golf Course in Long Beach. It's a fun event. It's all about having a good time. You take a shot of some really shitty bum wine at every single hole. And then there's little games type things that you play, you know, closest to the pin, spin in a circle, then hit. Um, those types of, it's a great, great tournament. The guys are a blast that we play with. I love it. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited for this one. The registration does close Saturday the 3rd. So that's, any second, but you can pay and register online through OCMGA.com. Check it out, guys. Otherwise, the next event to join our league or to come out and play with us would be the OC Rebel Beach AMAM, and that's Saturday, March 16th at 8 a.m. It's at the Costa Mesa Country Club, and it's a partner event, so you will be teamed up with the partner, and you basically try to go out and as a partner of two guys try to get the lowest combined score to win against everybody else that's playing that day and if i'm wrong on that i'm sure i'll get scolded by the league which is good um, but i'm pretty sure that's the way it's gonna go um, it's a great course dude i love the costa mesa country club because they have a hot window for food when you first get in there they have the pro shop out by the range they also have a little restaurant where you can actually go in and sit down so you can go inside there if you've got plenty of time, sit down, order breakfast, or have your lunch, or after the round you can sit and eat. Then there's even an additional bar. I mean, it's a really a fun golf course. I enjoy it. Um, registration online, again, for that event will be through the OCMGA. But if you're going to look into joining a MGA in your area, just go on to... Uh, the MGA website and look for your local chapter because their courses and times and locations are not the same as ours. So don't drive all the way from Atalanto thinking that, well, I thought this is where everybody met. No, um, I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction, guys. So get on, find your local uh, chapter, find out where their first um, event's going to be register as a guest go show up check it out you can pay online ahead of time so you'll show up and be ready to go uh, introduce yourself and just go from there um, otherwise it'll be ocmga.com and the registration will close march 2nd for this oc rebel beach am am tournament so that's going to be a really good event um, again the course is good i think there's two courses there I'm not sure which one we're playing, but I just, I like the whole setting of that place. And uh, it's typically a pretty good turnout for that event. 
Hopefully we have good weather because it's been a little on and off lately. Um, but nonetheless, we're playing rain or shine. The last event we just had, it rained on us 90% of the time. We were all soaked, but we all loved it. We had a good time with that. I was in the last group and I, I don't know, we were like two hours behind. Half the guys had left by the time I got back in there. So I'm sure I'll hear about that, which is fine. So we're going to move on from there, guys. This is just a quicker, uh, episode tonight. Another one, the Duntown show. Looks like we got everything covered. We'll be back. Keep an eye on those Lakers. Okay? Keep an eye on those Lakers, guys. The Knicks, 5.30 Saturday night. Um, LeBron, the king, he's in the garden. What's he going to do? Is he going to beat his average of, I believe, like 30-some points he averages in the, up in that mug? 